Hi, it's Pastor Paul L. Anderson here at the Fountain of Raleigh Fellowship, where we believe God's blessings never stop flowing. It is Fantastic Friday. We thank God for the wonderful ways he's blessed us and kept us all week long. We've had mountains and valleys in all of our lives, but God promised he'll always be there. I want to take a moment of personal privilege to get a birthday shout out to my great nephew, Caleb. Happy birthday, Caleb. May God bless you. May heaven smile upon you. Today, I invite you to look with me and to Acts the 24th chapter, verses 10 through 23. A very powerful message that we find that this talks about the acts of the Holy Spirit through and by the apostles. Now we find ourselves again picking up, talking about the Apostle Paul. As we heard that the governor has now mentioned Paul and he begins to let all of us see that he was there to judge the Jewish affairs and the affairs of all others. As Paul is now standing before him, they quickly discover that uh, there is something unique about this man. Now, uh, Paul finds himself uh, in the temple, and while he's there, everyone is beginning to argue because he said that he was following the man named Jesus. The one who he was following was the one who started a new way, the way that Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the light. But they said, Paul, you're part of a cult. Paul begins to let them know that I worship the God of our ancestors and I firmly believe the Jewish law and everything written in the prophets. I have the same hope in God that these men will be raised both to, to righteous and unrighteous. But now Paul finds himself that his accusers have him in the temple. But while he's in the temple, he was actually following the Jewish law and tradition. He was now finding himself in prison because he believed. He was only there to do a water purification ceremony. He was there to purify himself of his sins following the Hebraic law. But he was also there because he believed in the resurrection of the dead. Now he finds himself because he knows Jesus has been resurrected from the dead and he believes in it. But there was this large gathering of the Pharisees and the Sadducees who did not exactly believe the same. One believed in the resurrection of the dead and one believed in angels and the others didn't. And so now they find themselves at the point where Felix, who is the emperor of their day, says that you are here to start trouble. And now Paul begins to remind them that I am here to do what God has called me to be and what God has called me to do. They decide to keep Paul in custody and to let them know that we're holding you for the sake of your best interests so no harm will come against you. Well, how can that be? He's already being imprisoned because of what he believes. That's great harm. You and I, as we live in our contemporary world, we must tell the truth because the truth will set us free. But sometimes speaking up for the truth can cause some hardships. We have seen that in the days of history. We have seen it in this United States of America. But let's always remind ourselves, just as Paul stood up for the truth, you and I must stand up for the truth, even though sometimes it will have us to be ostracized and criticized. But we must always stand up for the truth. The truth is that Jesus is the way, the truth and the life and that no one comes unto the father but by him. My brothers and sisters, as we face some challenging days ahead, let's always be, re be reminded of the scripture that Jesus says, if you deny me before men, I'll deny you before my father. If you own me before men, I'll own you before my father. I want to agree with the apostle Paul. I will live for Jesus and I will die for Jesus. And I hope you can say the very same thing too. So let's encourage others to get to know Jesus and he will save you and set you free. God bless you. Heaven smile upon you. And I look forward to talking to you again on tomorrow. To sow a seed to the Fountain of Raleigh Fellowship, visit our newly redesigned website, thefountainofraleigh.org, and select Sow a Seed from the homepage. Also, giving has been made easier with the new Fountain of Raleigh app, available now in the Apple App Store and Google Play Store. Download today, select Giving from the main menu, and then follow the directions to complete your giving through Subsplash. Thank you so very much for all of your gifts and donations that you've given to the Fountain of Raleigh Fellowship. We thank you for what you've done in the past, what you're currently doing, and what you will do in the future. Your gifts and donations helps us to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ, not only locally, but throughout the world. Thank you again for your gifts, and may God continue to richly bless you. It is here at the Fountain that we believe that we are exceedingly and abundantly blessed, and may you receive those blessings that God has in store for you. Okay.